Welcome to the Diaspora Today Show, where we focus on diaspora for development in Africa and engagement with Africans in the diaspora. On the show this week, we host Ambassador Mo Katenge, the Ambassador of Republic of Uganda to the United States. We get his insights on Uganda diaspora issues, 17 emerging economy across Africa, AU Continental Free Trade Agreement, and single, air, single African air transport market. According to Ali Mufuruki, do not mistake hope for achievement. Is Africa moving forward economically? Send us your views on Diaspora Today Show. You are watching the Diaspora Today Show. I am Abdul Rashid Abu Bakr. His Excellency, Ambassador Mul Katende, the Ambassador of the Republic of Uganda to the United States of America, welcomes the CABNC TV crew members to his office in Washington, D.C. In his effort to attract foreign investors to his home country, Uganda, popularly known as the Pearl of Africa, His Excellency took his time to brief the CABNC TV crew on its mandate. He showed pictures of previous heads of mission and ambassadors with their various achievements and support for Uganda diaspora. The first ambassador of Uganda to the United States of America is Excellency Dr. Solomon Bayo. 1964 to 1966. His Excellency Erifansi Eric Otema Alimandi, 1966 to 1971. His Excellency Mustafa Ramatha, 1971 to 1973. His Excellency Joshua Zek. 1979 to 1980. His Excellency John Whitelef J.D. 1981 to 1985. Our Excellency Our Royal Highness Elizabeth Bagaya Yabongo 1986 to 1988. His Excellency Stephen Katenta Apoli. 1988 to 1996. Her Excellency, Edith Sempala, 1996 to 2006. His Excellency, Professor Perez K. Kamunon Y, 2006 to 2013. Her Excellency, Oliver Woneka, 2013 to 2017. Welcome, Ambassador Mal Sebuja Katenge, to the Diaspora Today Show. Thank you for honoring my invitation. Thank you very much. Yes, Ambassador, uh, Ugandans in the diaspora are estimated uh, of about 1.5 million by the United Nations uh, Human Development Report. How can you leverage the power, or in what ways are you trying to leverage the power of Ugandans in the diaspora towards uh, a 
economic development in Uganda? First of all, let me welcome you uh, to, the, to, 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 to this in, interview and to thank you for according me this opportunity as well as to thank your television station thank you. for the commendable job you are doing. Thank you, sir. Now, diaspora is one of the mandates to all Ugandan missions. Here, it is mandate number five. We are mandated to mobilize the diaspora for development in Uganda. In the United States, we estimate over 100,000 Ugandan diaspora. Of course, all over the world, you have said the figure, about 1.5. And this is incredible because they contribute close to 1.3 billion annually in terms of remittances. And that is why the government puts a lot of priority to the diaspora, which is why it is one of our mandate here to mobilize them for development in Uganda. Now, there are many reasons uh, when you go deep into the issue. The diaspora in the past, when you when, when Africa was getting out of colonialism, played a role. Those who went to study abroad in Europe, in America, in Asia, returned to Africa and undertook very important tasks of education, of governance, and that was their contribution. The diaspora of today is equally important because of the point I have made, the remittances they sent back to Africa. And for Uganda, we really commend them. And uh, one of my priorities is to reach out to them to make sure that these remittances are leveraged into more impactive portfolios or platforms. Thank you, Ambassador. You said one of your priorities is to leverage and to ensure that the remittance is put to positive use in Uganda. So what are your plans? Well, the plans are many. The government of Uganda already has a policy. We have put in place institutions uh, specific departments that deal with, with diaspora issues in the office of the president, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in the Parliament of Uganda. Actually, the next stage in terms of institutions is to give a specific ministry for diaspora issues. That one, I'm sure we are moving there. But also, we have put in place a lot of incentives for the diaspora to take advantage of them. I talked of 1.3 billion from all the diaspora all over the world. This amount does not go in a consolidated manner. These are remittances sent to relatives to pay school fees, to help them with the day-to-day -day expenses, or for the use of the diaspora to build themselves houses. But when we put it together, the figure is so large. On the ground, the government may not say, this is what it has done, but we know it is doing a lot of job. So the platforms we are encouraging them to engage in are economic uh, platforms Platform. so that they can find a way of coming together and 
they leverage their earnings in a way that they can do investments back home that will even earn them. I'm sure if a diaspora out of his salary here in America, out of his salary can save, say, 200 to a cooperative, many diaspora coming together from a cooperative and the injecting 200, 200, a figure of 100,000, that's a lot of money. But 200 will not make a lot of impact on the person paying it. But overall, they can be able to put up a block of flats which they can rent and start getting uh, uh, income, more income. And uh, the government has uh, also encouraged the private sector to work with us on diaspora issues. Right now, we have banks that are already working with the diaspora. Banks where you can send your money, keep it, and, and, and you, you earn interest. Instead of the old model, where you have got to send money, then they change, then you lose, then you pay commissions. So there is that platform. Then housing. Many diaspora have been uh, affected uh, through scams by relatives or friends. You say you want to build a house, and uh, someone says, I'm building it. You go back, the house is not there. But now there are these building uh, companies that can build for them houses, proper houses. And it is up to them to say, I want a house of this design. If they come together, they can agree on a block within a big estate. But even more, they can escalate that into what we now call Africa villages, where you have a lot of facilities within one facility, shopping malls, schools, uh, health services, and all that as income. I think they can do a lot more with the money they earn. And we are in touch with them. For Uganda, we, we are working through the Uganda North America Association, association. and it is a big association uh, where we encourage them to come together uh, socially, but most importantly, economically, and, and, and see how to leverage their earnings in a much more impactive way. Ambassador, um, unemployment seems to be a very critical issue in Uganda. Uh, based on uh, World Bank statistics, about 64% youths are said to be unemployed. What can you tell me or what the government of Uganda is doing to, to eradicate unemployment, joblessness in Uganda? Unemployment of the youth is not something preserved to Uganda alone. It is an African issue, and uh, Africa has uh, given it a clear platform in terms of what should be done for the youth. If you look at the statistics, uh, more than the figure of unemployed, if you look at the statistics, most of our populations are youth. And it is important that they, are, they, they secure jobs. So 
for Uganda, there are specific deliberate programs to empower the youth, to have them get employment. But most especially for them to be employers, to do their own. To be entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. We will continue to advocate for investors because with investors into manufacturing, into services, you create jobs. That will continue. But for the whole bulk, the other viable option is for them to have entrepreneurial uh, mindset. mindset. And already there are programs. The president has put in place programs that assist youth. The Ministry for Gender, Labor and Social Development has put in place programs that assist the youth how to get that mindset. And uh, the, the, the journey is still long, but uh, we are on the right track. Um, thank you, Ambassador Moll. The um, recently uh, signed African Union Free Trade Continental Agreement, Uganda subscribed to this. And also, Uganda is uh, part to single Africa air uh, transport market. Mm. Do you see this as a way forward for African economic development? Obviously. Until recently, Africa's contribution to, to trade intra Africa was simply 2%. The trade we do with each other until recently was 2%, which is rather abnormal. But over time, Africa is now doing more trade with, with itself. We are not yet there, but that is the essence of the continental free trade area, which was recently signed in Kigali. And uh, as you know, Uganda believes in regional integration because as a country, as Uganda, we cannot be viable. And any country in Africa alone cannot be viable. So we have got to work together. And that way we'll be able to create jobs for the youth we will be able to increase prosperity for our countries. Now, you talked about uh, the single uh, air space. Single Africa air yes. market trans uh, transport market. Under the Yamasukuru agreement. Yes, that is really about opening the skies so that all the airlines can operate in each other's country in a free atmosphere without obstruction. That is the essence of free market. Not only for the air, for everything else. So that we can fully exploit our potential as Africa. I, 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 before I came to USA, I was ambassador based in Addis Ababa, covering Ethiopia, Djibouti, and the African Union, as well as the UN Economic Commission for Africa and IGAD. And uh, we, 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 we currently have four flights by Ethiopian Airlines in Entebbe. Four flights. And these are big flights. I wanted to know the flight at night. Are there people? So I would book on the night flight. And people are full. So there is a market. Africans are traveling. Africans are trying to find opportunities all over. So if we go into this air business, 
and then we open our air spaces. It's good for all of us. And I'm glad that we, you are having now airlines booming. Rwanda had no airline. Now they, are, uh, they, they have a, a, an airline. Mm -hmm. Tanzania is boosting its airline. Kenya Airways is boosting. Uh, the, the Nigeria. Nigeria is now planning to establish the largest airline in Africa. So all of these are developments. When they operate in a free market, I think the potential will be fully exploited. Ambassador, you mentioned that Nigeria, you know, Nigeria is planning to have the largest uh, air operation in Africa. But Nigeria is yet to sign the AU Free Trade uh, Area Agreement. Well, there are some issues. Some of them are just administrative issues. You see, all our countries have got different regimes on how to enter into agreements. Some countries, before you sign an agreement, you must go through the process, including with the legislature. Some countries you can sign, then go to those processes. That is what happened in Chigali. So some countries, like Nigeria, like South Africa, they are, they, 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 they are required to do that. But they may be having other issues, which I think will be sorted out. Okay. Uh, because you see, in Africa, one of the challenges we have had is protectionism. There is this challenge of you know, import substitution, protectionism. Uh, but uh, over time, we are learning that actually you do more trade. <clears throat> I was a head of department responsible for the East African community at my, uh, my, 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 my country's headquarters in Kampala. And one of my responsibilities was to cover issues to do with the East African community. And we are one of those officials who started that process that built into the treaty, then the customs union. Now, at that time, the feeling in East Africa was that, oh, Kenya is going to, 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 to make us close even the few industries we have. Oh. But as we moved, we said, look, we may be at different stages with each other, but actually we are in the same pit. And if we do open, we are going to realize more. And that's what happened. Eventually, when East African community was established and a study was made, it concluded that before the trade amongst us was lower than the trade among the stars after the treaty. So it makes sense that uh, we promote regional integration. That's yeah. the way forward. Even in larger countries like, uh, like USA, that's, that's what they, they are yearning for. Mm, okay, I don't, I don't want to delve into America first, but I think we are all, we want the good for our countries. Uh, but we operate with others. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador. Um, you recently announced uh, that uh, Uganda is open for business. What are your plans for this announcement? Not, uh, that was not a recent announcement. This has been uh, the agenda of the NRM government since it came into power in 1986. At that time, our economy was very bad. 
And this government has attracted investors, it has attracted uh, business operators, and we are now at a, a higher level than where we were. So the call for investments has been an ongoing concern. And uh, that's one of my mandates here, to take to, to Uganda as many investors as I can from the USA, to get as many markets as I can for Ugandan products, and also to convince people, to, Americans, to go and visit Uganda, the part of Africa. So many spectacular things that can make them happy. Thank you, uh, Ambassador. Uh, so what advice do you have for the Ugandans in the diaspora? No, for the Ugandan in diaspora, my message is that we value you, we respect you, and we know that you may be Americans, but you also remain at heart as, as Ugandans or as Africans. And we want to work with you so that uh, you can leverage the remittances you have been sending back to the country into more impactive platforms. And uh, in this regard, I would like to wish my Ugandan nationals and diaspora the best as we go towards the the convention in Seattle in, in August, September. And during that convention, we will interact with you on how to work more towards uh, more development in Uganda with your participation. And uh, anything that uh, you wish me to to do for you in respect to this matter of diaspora cooperation, I am ready 27. Thank you so much, Ambassador. For other Africans in the diaspora? The same message. As I told you, the, the, even the African Union has a policy on diaspora. I was covering the African Union, it has a policy. Right now in Washington, D.C., at the African Union office, we have a radio. And that radio is committed, is com is committed to communicating with the diaspora all over the United States. And each embassy has a voice on that uh, radio to send messages to their nationals or their diaspora, and uh, all Africans, we are the same. We have, we share a lot. It would please me that all these things are moving in the right direction for all countries of Africa. And we already have very good examples. We have Ethiopia. Who, have, who are a bit ahead of us in terms of diaspora mobilization. And uh, those are good testimonies for our diaspora to know that the journey As to, 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 to development in Africa is, the right, is on the right course. Thank you very much for watching the show, uh, the Diaspora Today show today. And uh, thank you so much, uh, you. my guest today, Ambassador Mal Sebuja Katenge. Uh, my viewers from all around the world, till we meet again, my name once again is Abdul Rashid Abubakar. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. Thank you.